So in the last couple of videos, we've been talking about hybridization. So we saw that the uh, sp3 hybridization, that is when an s orbital combines with all three of the p orbitals to result in the formation of four sp3 hybrids, and we observed that in molecules such as methane and ammonia. Then we took a look at sp2 hybridization, which is the combination of the s orbital with only two of the p orbitals, leaving behind an unhybridized p orbital and also forming three sp2 hybrids. And uh, we saw that in molecules like ethylene, which contain a carbon-carbon double bond. And we've, we've uh, observed that that carbon-carbon double bond actually uh, is composed of two different types of overlaps. The direct overlap, known as a sigma bond, and a sideways overlap uh, that we call a pi bond. And uh, if you've been watching the rest of the videos, I apologize if this sounds redundant. I just sort of you know want to get the point across. So if you haven't already uh, recognized the pattern, uh, now we're going to talk about sp hybridization. So an, an sp hybridized atom uh, has a combination of an s orbital and one of the three p orbitals, uh, and this forms two sp hybrid orbitals. So one of the p orbitals combined with the s orbital to make two hybrid orbitals, and those other two p orbitals, remember, because there's always three p orbitals, uh, once you get past that uh, first uh, sublevel, uh, you get into the second sublevel, and that's when you have three p orbitals. So, out of those three p orbitals, only one of them uh, is involved in hybridization, and the other two are along for the ride, so to speak. They are unhybridized. So, each of those two s p orbitals has 50% s character and 50% p character. And uh, mathematically, it turns out that those orbitals are 180 degrees apart from one another. So. Any, uh, any sp hybridized atom is going to have a linear uh, geometry around it, 180 degrees apart. So in this picture, the orbitals are shown separately, but let's look at a picture in which the orbitals are shown together. Okay, so uh, basically, so, so what's going on with this picture? Well, uh, we have our sp hybrid orbitals and we have our p orbitals all uh, shown together. So the sp orbitals, this is one of the sp orbitals, and this is the other sp orbital. So each of these orbitals actually has another, you know, sort of back lobe to it. You know how those hybrid orbitals tend to have a small uh, back lobe on the other side of the nucleus. They're not shown in this picture because it would have been very, very difficult to uh, draw it. Anyway, so those are the sp orbitals. And then you also have the p orbitals. So this is one of the p orbitals up here. And then this across here is the other p orbital. So the, when, I, when I've drawn the p orbitals, the p orbitals actually have both lobes shown together. The sp orbitals, I haven't shown the back lobes because they sort of you know, interfere with one another and are extremely difficult to draw. So what does all this mean? Well, as I mentioned before, those sp orbitals are, are 180 degrees uh, apart from one another. And the way that the p orbitals are oriented, the p orbitals are oriented in the plane that is perpendicular to the line that is formed by the sp orbital. So remember, you can basically draw a straight line through the center of the sp orbitals, and that's why they're linear. They're 180 degrees apart. And the p orbitals, which are uh, per perpendicular with respect to one another, so that, that, that'll always be true for p orbitals, any pure unhybridized p orbitals, those p orbitals are perpendicular to one another and the plane that, the, that those p orbitals form is perpendicular to the line formed by the sp orbitals. So that means that the sp orbitals sort of cut through the plane formed by these p orbitals. So the way I've tried to draw it, I've tried to draw it so that this uh, this lobe here, or this uh, sp orbital here, is sort of coming in in front, of, you know, towards you, and this sp orbital is sort of going back uh, into the into the uh, page. So that is basically what an sp hybridized atom looks like. So now let's look at a molecule in which atoms are sp hybridized. So this uh, is what we call acetylene. It's also called ethyne. And it consists of uh, two carbons that are uh, triply bonded to one another. So there's a triple covalent bond between the two carbons. And each of the carbons also has a hydrogen bonded to it as well. <clears throat> so the carbon atoms in acetylene are sp hybridized and this is a good uh, this is a good point uh, a good place to show 
uh, basically how a triple covalent bond works. So when we talked about sp2 hybridization, we saw that a double covalent bond consists of a sigma bond and a pi bond, while a triple covalent bond actually consists of a sigma bond and two pi bonds. So basically, uh, these basically uh, show, this picture basically shows all of the uh, orbitals. So if we take a look at the sigma bonds first, well, the carbon hydrogen bonds are, are each sigma bond. So these things here, this is just a, a sigma bond between uh, an sp hybrid and a, and a 1s orbital of hydrogen. The bond in here between the two carbons, this is actually, this overlap is a sigma bond between the two sp hybrid orbitals. So let me go ahead and write all this down. So we have this which is an S, excuse me, a sigma bond between an sp orbital and an s orbital. <clears throat> this thing in here is a sigma bond between an sp and another sp. And now let's look at the pi bonds. So basically what the pi bonds look like, remember a pi bond is a sideways overlap of p orbitals. So one of the pi bonds is between this orbital and this orbital. So that is one of the pi bonds. So that overlap, that orbital overlapping with that orbital. Now in this drawing they're not shown as overlapping but again that's just due to the uh, artistic uh, limitations that I have. So that's one of the pi bonds. And then the other pi bond is between these two p orbitals. See how that works? So there's one pi bond there and then there's the second pi bond down there. So that's basically what uh, what sp hybridized atoms look like and uh, in the next couple of videos I'm going to show you how to uh, basically tie all of the hybridization in together and just to be able to look uh, at a molecule and determine the central atoms hybridization. So, alright.